chapter 23, verses 8 through 11. Yeah, yeah. Call no man on earth father, for one is your father in heaven. Yeah. And that was brought up to me by a, a Lutheran kid in my school. And I was wondering, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't have a response to that. And I was just wondering, what can I say uh, to people who argue against that? So besides the 5,000 responses I've done already, but okay, let's go through that. Say, so call no man on earth your father, right? Yeah. Say, do you call your father father? Yes. So that means he violated the text, didn't he? Yeah. And then what is he going to say? Oh, no, no, no. Now he's going to qualify. No, 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 no. That's not what Jesus meant. Well, hold on. He said, call no man on earth your father. Oh, so it doesn't mean what you think. I get it. So you say, it means do not call any spiritual leader your father. Oh, so now you qualify that. Because remember, first it's Matthew 23, 9, call no man on earth your father. He didn't say, call no spiritual guide your father, right? Yeah. So if I take it literally, I can't even call my dad my dad, right? If I take it literally. Yeah. Now, obviously, we know that Jesus didn't mean that. That's what you're trying to show him. First of all, if you read it the way you're reading it, literally, you shouldn't call your dad father. No, that's not what he meant. Ah, that's what you're trying to get him to see. Also, there's a meaning that's not apparent when you read it on a surface level, right? Yes. Now, he doesn't believe the Bible contradicts, right? Uh, no, he doesn't. Okay, well, we got a problem, mister. You know why? Because here we have Jesus and Paul saying Abraham is our father. John 8, 56. Jesus says to the Jews, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it was glad. So Jesus contradicting himself? Yes. And on top of that, Abraham is dead. Why is he talking about someone dead still being their father? I do not know. Oh, but then Paul says in Romans 4, 16, for this reason, it is by faith in order that it may be according to grace, so that the promise will be guaranteed to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. But wait, you're not supposed to call any man on earth father. Oh, but he's not on earth. Oh, okay, so you mean someone who's dead to us, he's alive, but he's not on earth, and he's still called our father? Interesting. Or what about this? Now, if you don't believe Paul contradicts Jesus... Then can you explain this to me? Hold on. Because look what Paul says here. Okay. Okay. Now watch here. Watch here. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 and 15. I do not write these things to shame you, but to demonize you as my beloved children. For if you were to have countless tutors in Christ, yet you would not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. How dare you, Paul, call them your children? And how dare you say you're their father? So we got a contradiction, huh? Yeah, we do. Okay, because this is the danger of putting the Bible in the hands of someone on train. But that's why we grow. I'm just waiting for the cat coming. Okay, hold on. Well, maybe that wasn't good enough. Hey, uh, Paul, why are you calling Timothy your son when Timothy's not your biological son? For this reason, I've sent to you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. He's your child in the Lord? But you can't have anyone calling you father. Here you're saying, I'm their father, and they're my children. Paul, Matthew 23, 9, mister. Can I see how stupid that argument is? Yes. So what is he saying, if you understand the context? Well, let's look at the context, shall we? Let's look at it. Let's see what he's actually saying. Let's look at the context. All right, context is beautiful, sir, when someone studies it. La, 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 la. All right, here you go. We're going to start reading. All right, so watch here. The context is crucial. So are you seeing it? What does it say in verse 1, sir? Who is he talking to? Uh, the crowds and to his disciples. Okay, so he says to crowds and disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. This is the key, meaning they sit. In the seat of Moses, speaking on behalf of Moses. Why? Because they interpret the law, right? Yeah. Now, here's the danger. When you look to spiritual guides and you make them more than they are, the danger is you blindly follow them even when they're mistaken. So I'm going to explain what Jesus is saying in a minute, but let's look at the context, everyone. Therefore, all that they tell you, do and keep. When they tell you from the law, do it, but do not do according to their deeds. But don't follow them because they're hypocrites. 
For they say things and do not do them, and they tie up heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are unwilling, right, to move them with so much as a finger. But they do all their deeds to be noticed by men, for they broaden their phylacteries and lengthen the tassels of their garments, and they love the place of honored banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and respectful greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by men. They want to be taken as authorities to be feared, to whom you submit and never question. This is the context. But do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher and you are all brothers. I want to show you that the same Bible says Christ has sent many teachers. Same word for teacher is used elsewhere. And do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. Do not be called instructors, for one is your instructor, that is Christ. Okay, now the context. Did you understand the context? Yes. He's not saying do not use the words, otherwise you have a contradiction in the Bible. What he's saying is your attitude and disposition. What do I mean? Do not look to any human authority and submit to any human authority and give your allegiance to any human authority as you would the Father and Jesus Christ. Okay, That's so I can, I can still talk to my priest and say, Father, of at, course you can. as him being an authority, as long yes. as he is below that of Christ's scripture. No, that's the point. You got it. What he's saying is the only persons you blindly follow and never question, never question, is the Father, because he can never fail you, he can never be wrong. The Son can never fail you, never be wrong, and the Spirit. So you give your wholehearted allegiance and never question or doubt what Father, Son, and Spirit tell you, but for the rest, they can be mistaken. And I'll give you an example. Peter himself, the head of the apostles. In Galatians 2, 11 to 16, Paul practiced this. He practiced this because Peter started pulling away from the Gentiles because a certain group of Jews from James came who said to people, you got to get circumcised and you got to keep the dietary laws of Moses. Otherwise, you're not saved. And Paul condemned them saying, no, you're preaching a false gospel. So Peter pulled himself away from the Gentiles when those Jews came and started hanging around with those Jews. And Paul condemned them to his face saying, you hypocrite. Galatians 2, 11 and 16. Now, what was Paul showing you? He was showing you the application of this verse. I don't care how great you are, Peter. I don't care you're the head of the apostles. I don't care that you're inspired by the Spirit. I don't care that you're giving revelation that we follow. You're still a man, and when you act contrary to the very teaching you yourself preach, you will be held accountable because you're not Christ, and I don't swear allegiance to you as I do Christ. That's why Catholic bishops, cardinals, priests still have a right to question the Pope. But they'll tell you, yeah, you can. You have a right. Galatians 2, 11, 16. Here. But when Cephas came, that's the name of Peter Tantioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. This is what Jesus was saying. You don't look to Peter with the same attitude and devotion as you do to Christ. When Christ says it, gospel truth, end of story. But Peter can be mistaken and needs to be called out. You got it? Yes. How do we know? Because, of course, Paul was a saint. He was my confirmation saint. How do we know that the authority to challenge Peter didn't come from Pete, Paul being uh, a layman instead of Paul being a saint? Like well, Peter. Like saint Peter. When you say, how do we know? I don't know what you're asking me. Because if you're asking me that as a layman, you can't question a priest and bishop, well, that would be true depending on your level. Are you a babe? You don't understand scripture? Then you need to shut up. I would say right now I you don't have no You have no authority because you don't know anything. It's just like what you did with me earlier. Just get clear. You, you misapplied a verse and you condemned me and you got corrected because you need to shut up. You don't know enough. Yes. So if you're asking me that, must you be a priest or a bishop? Well, no, not necessarily. But you must be someone who is seasoned, qualified and know the faith and you have people of God who are mature confirming that you know the faith from the mouth of two or three witnesses but you yourself if you're a babe you have no right to question anyone because you don't know enough okay 
You understand? But what was the point of showing you Paul? Peter was an eyewitness to Christ. He walked with Christ and saw Christ on earth and saw Christ alive before he ascended. Paul came later. But just because Peter came earlier and had a position of authority over the other apostles, including Paul, did not prevent Paul from calling him out for hypocrisy, for acting contrary to the very gospel that Peter confirmed with Paul. That's the point I'm showing you. You, on the other hand, have no business to question anyone. I understand. You don't have the qualification. Yeah. Sorry. Do you understand what Jesus meant and didn't mean? Yes, I do. Okay, that's it. Thank so, you. okay. So, what else? Do you had another question?